What's shaking, Bacons? Predator 2K18 is out, and I saw it, and now we are gonna talk about it. Before I dive into this, I want to let you know that I will have spoilers at the end of this review, but I will warn you in advance. So, when I tell you the scooch, you best scooch. But, up until that point, this review will be a non-spoilers review. This year's version of The Predator was written and directed, of course, by Shane Black, who has a reputation for being a very, very great action screenwriter, and he was also in the original Predator as Hawkins. So, of course, he's directing this one. Expectations are high. The story for this movie was written by both Shane Black and Fred Decker, so there was some kind of collaboration here. The story for The Predator 2018 is that, yet again, a predator has landed on our planet. Shock. Granted, it was a crash landing. However, it's here. Our boy Quinn McKenna teams up with a band of misfits and a biologist to face down the threat that it poses and rescue his son. I will say that I really enjoyed this movie while I was watching it. This is a great example of movies that I have talked about where you can enjoy them and acknowledge that they are terrible. Because while this film is amazingly enjoyable while you're watching it, and it's very rapidly paced, so you don't have a second really to think about the flaws that are occurring. When you leave the theater, you're like, wow, <laughs> that was pretty bad. However, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And in interest of full honesty with you guys, I walked into this movie thinking, this is going to be terrible. And it was, but it was an enjoyable terrible. I have to say, for me, Shane Black fell kind of short with this one. It was not up to what I think his usual standards are. And I don't know if that's because movies these days, I feel like they're being forced to kind of cram themselves into this preset mold. Half the time, I feel like movies come out just to sell toys. But for whatever the reason, it just was not up to Shane Black's usual standard. I am happy to say that the trailers do not give away the twist in this movie, although that's kind of because there's not enough of a plot to this film for there to be a twist to really give away. <laughs> there's just not. But we do get some great action sequences. They're not the best I've ever seen, but they're fun. It's engaging. Most of the characters are engaging. There's one action sequence where myself and the entire theater all sucked air in unison and went, <sighs> ooh, you know when the whole theater goes, <sighs> it's a pretty brutal kill. This is definitely an action film. This is not a film that you should go to expecting there to be really any substance to the story. There are moments where this film feels and is reminiscent of the original Predator. There's echoes of the original without going overboard, hammering home the nostalgia factor or cashing in on that in order to get the audience in. And they didn't simply recreate the first movie, which thank God, because that's been something that's been happening way too much lately. The gang they get together of all these misfits from the army and the biologist and all the people that they interact with and encounter have great banter, they'll have great chemistry, and I think that that is really what shines the most in this film. The problem is that the story itself lacks the substance to make this film great. Part of that is because there were so many inconsistencies and changes to what you think the plot is doing. Like there are story threads that are completely dropped halfway through the movie. It felt after finishing the movie and honestly about halfway through the film that Shane Black and Fred Decker had started writing one story and then halfway through completely changed the story. The second half of the film does not feel like it matches the first half of the film. The only way it really feels like it matches are that they have the same cast of characters. There's a huge disconnect in the majority of the storylines and the plot lines, and there's a lot of inconsistencies. Adding to this is the issue that the pacing of the film is so rapidly accelerated that you don't have a time to actually look at what is being shown in the film or process what's happening. And there are scenes where I had no clue how we got from A to B 
and there was transitions where you were having characters speak and then mid-conversation it would just flip to the next scene. So you were missing out on half of the dialogue. It was just next scene, next scene, next scene, next scene, next scene. You didn't have a second to process anything. And part of me wonders if they did that because pacing it that quickly for the large part will keep most moviegoers from noticing the plot and the story issues because there's nothing explained. There's one point where they show that there's a trap that's been set, and I have no idea how they got to the trap. They were running in one scene, there was a trap in the next scene. There was no discussion of a trap being made, there was no display of them working on setting up this trap, there's just, it's, there's nothing that is explained. And that is the major issue with this film. It's very predictable as well, don't get me wrong, and I predicted that it would be predictable. That's to be expected because it's an action movie and it's trying to echo films in a series that we're all very familiar with. So predictability is to be expected with a movie like this. But if it wasn't predictable, it would have been very hard to follow because of the different storylines that completely change halfway through the film and because of the rapid pacing. The end of the film, just felt as though it was simply a setup for a sequel. That, to me, is a particularly egregious sin that a film can commit, because after you go to the theater and you've paid to watch this movie, or even if you're watching it at home, you pay with your time, because time's the most valuable currency we have. You pay with your time to see this, and you're expecting there to be a story at least, or a plot, or that it's going to go somewhere, and this film just appears to go almost nowhere or very infinitesimally forward in time just to set up a sequel, which they allude to within the last maybe three minutes of the film. Honestly, it's kind of cheesy. And it felt like they're trying to set up a kind of Marvel Avengers thing, which in my opinion, they shouldn't be, but that's just my opinion. Now, I will say the acting for this movie was impressive. I only had issues with one actor in this film. The biggest surprise for me was Boyd Hallbrook as the primary character, which is Quinn McKenna. I did not think that he was going to do a good job. I thought he was just going to be kind of a meathead they cast to play the soldier role that he's in, and to my great surprise, he did a wonderful job. And there was enough individuality to him as a character that you really enjoyed watching what he was doing on the screen. I loved the gang of misfits. I was sad that our boy Alfie Allen didn't have more of a chance to showcase his talents, but I really enjoyed even Key's performance, although he did, predictably, his role was largely terrible jokes. I enjoyed the depth that Trevante Rhodes brought to his character as Nebraska, and the other characters were just so fun, and they were all so quirky, with Augusto Aguilera as Nettles and Thomas Jane as Baxley. They were all just a very fun gang, and their interplay and their banter back and forth was incredibly enjoyable. For me, leaving the film, that is really what I remembered, was how much I enjoyed just watching that group of people interact with each other and the chemistry that they had as a team. Sterling Brown, I think, stood out as the primary antagonist, although he's not technically the antagonist, although they tried to make him out to be very evil. The problem is that when you have an antagonist that you are portraying as evil, although no one comes out and says that they're bad, there was no motivation behind it, and there was no need for half of the things that he did, but he did a good job acting. The main issue I had with the acting was Olivia Munn, and I'm honestly not certain if that is her fault or if it's just because her character was so bland and her character is such a Mary Sue to the nth degree. Her character in this film goes from a simple biologist that you actually don't get any background explained on to a machine gun warrior that you would have thought served with the army rangers with McKenna. Her evolution does not make sense, and honestly, her part in this was just like Indiana Jones in Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail, where if you had removed her character, there would honestly be nothing lost from this film. And that's sad, because I'm sure Olivia Munn could have brought much more, and I think that Shane Black and Fred Decker 
could have given her character a much more involved part and actually made the character valuable somehow, and they didn't. Her character seemed to be used for some exposition, but the problem is that everything she started to explain was either already explained by Sterling Brown's character, or another character explained it immediately after she starts talking. Every single time. Her character had absolutely no point. It was a pretty big problem watching this film. It end I ended up like flapping my hand at the screen like, what? what's the point of her? I the movie ended, I still didn't know who she was. Also, shout out to Jack Busey as random scientist that appears. And at first I thought it was the guy from HGTV's Fixer Upper. <laughs> he looks exactly like him. I was like, how the Fixer Upper guy end up in the Predator 2K18? The good thing that this movie has going for it is that it is entertaining. As bad as the story is and as troublesome as the inclusion of a character is that doesn't matter at all and they devote a lot of screen time to her. It is very, very entertaining. And it is funny, although they do tend to go overboard with the slapstick humor. And I may be misremembering, but honestly, if you want to be true to the original spirit of the Predator, I don't recall this much slapstick in these films. So is this movie great? No. But is it enjoyable and is it fun to watch? Yes. For that reason, my final rating for The Predator is a 55%. Now I'm going to quickly talk about spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled for this film, you best scooch along. You need to scooch, don't get spoiled. This isn't going to be a long section because I think I've said basically most of what I wanted to say in the non-spoiler section. However, for those of you who have seen the movie, here's what I really had problems with. I talked about how the inconsistencies and the story are the biggest issues with this film. The plot line started in the beginning with the Predator coming to Earth and he's brought something. Doesn't match up to where they went with the end. So I think the twist at the end, right, was that the Predator that first arrived was actually trying to help us because we're being, we're gonna be invaded. They're gonna take over our planet. But they're not actively taking over our planet. They're just collecting our DNA. And if he was trying to help humans, why did he just bust out and start killing people right off the bat? McKenna doesn't attack him in the beginning until he's already butchered the first dude. So if the first alien was trying to help us, why did he just start killing people? And they don't explain that anywhere. We start with one plot. And then as, you know, as part of that plot, the alien is hunting for the diode or whatever on his wrist bracelet. And so is Traeger for like the first half of the film. And then all of a sudden the alien was supposed to be helping us and his little wrist tracker bracelet thing never comes back into play. They never talk about why they're looking for it. Movie goes in a different direction. All of a sudden then they're looking for the ship. This just doesn't make sense. There's so many abandoned plot threads. There's a large focus on McKenna's son in this too. They highlighted him as the next evolution in the human species. And magically this kid just somehow knows the entire alien language because he played with the helmet as a video game. How did he connect the helmet to his computer system? How did he suddenly learn the entire language? Because it's not like he downloaded that in his brain. He didn't have a translation by putting the helmet on, but he saw this big alien scene where they were injecting the Predator. That had nothing to do with language. That has nothing to do with teaching him how to use their technology. And all of a sudden, he's just beep boop beep, letting himself and all the other government scientists into this ship that they find with the map that he somehow knew exactly where to find the ship that hadn't been shown anywhere. There was just so much of a focus on this kid and I felt like they weren't doing it for the plot. They were doing it for the sake of inclusivity. And I like having that representation for people in movies, but if you're gonna do it, you need to have a reason for it. You need to have it put in organically. It just didn't make sense. And it was the same thing for Olivia Munn. I appreciate that they're trying to add more women to the story, but you ruin that goal when the character is pointless. There was no point to her character. She was so unbelievable as a character. There was no need to bring her in. She acts like she has no clue in the beginning of the film. Halfway through when the plot completely changes, she's like, well, I was on call for them. That's how I worked for them. But she acted like she had no clue what was going on in the first place. And her little alien dog moment, there was, they just brought this alien dog, the predator dog in with her when it was convenient for the plot just to keep her alive. 
She somehow teleports from miles away, watching as the ship crashes at the end, to suddenly she learns how to go invisible with the thing that they never show McKenna giving her, and then she's able to jump commando style onto the last predator at the end and machine gun him. She goes from clueless biologist to basically an army ranger like McKenna with no character development, and there was literally no point to her being there. There was absolutely no point to her being there, other than for them to say, we cast more women in this movie. And as a woman, I find that more offensive than if you just hadn't had a woman at all, because you're just putting a token in there. Like, it's like a pat on the head. It's like, there you go, you were included. We put this useless character in for you, and it's it's kind of offensive, in all honesty, because it's so, it's so bad. It really is, and it's disappointing. I mean, there were other smaller inconsistencies throughout this film, too. Like, the way McKenna's wife acted, she's like, you don't live here anymore, we're not a family. And then, halfway through the plot, when the whole plot changes, she's telling the surveillance people, you messed with the wrong family, my husband's gone. <laughs> the only characters that really stay the same are the Misfit Gang and McKenna. They are the only consistent characters that stay true to who they are from the beginning of the film to the end of the film. And maybe that's why I liked them best out of all of the characters and out of the entire movie. Because they were consistent, and they were well-rounded, and they were funny. And let's just talk about the end scene. The whole movie just felt like a build-up to this one end scene. Uh, was it just me or was it kind of cheesy? That suit looked kind of dumb. It wasn't very impressive, I think. Um, kind of made me feel like they're gonna just start a new series with the Predator Avenger. I just don't know what they were going for with the plot of this movie because it went in so many different directions. It's hard to figure out what exactly their end game was. Like I said, this is a fun movie to watch, but it's got a lot of problems, and I think that the pacing was simply done just to keep us from seeing the problems until after you leave the theater. I did enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but I think that this movie is a great example of why I use the movie rating scale system that I do, because when honestly, when I put in my criteria and I deducted points for this film, it ended up being a higher score than my feelings about the movie. It made me want to rewatch the first one more than anything else. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but that's not the point <laughs> of the movie. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. I hope you're all having an amazing weekend. I guess I'll catch you later.